What's up guys, it's Kyle, also known as the Panda Man, in Houston for the first time in Texas. Got a seminar putting on on mind mapping in about two hours or so. Second workout of the day, the guys just got here a little while ago, but to get the brain going, get you feeling good before you get, you get out in front of people and try to give them good energy. Best way to change your state, physical movement. So you'll see, we'll kind of do like a, nothing crazy. 20, 25 minute workout, let's get it going. That's your pretty nice hotel gym. So we'll take you through that and you can try it next time you travel. We'll go in. Ready to go. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> Thanks, too. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Okay. All right, let's see. Can you guys hear me? Got it? Okay. So I know it's the end of a long day, long couple of days for you guys. So I'm gonna make this as entertaining as possible. A lot of this is gonna be about your attention and your self-awareness. That's really how you control everything is with your mind. So I'm gonna teach you a few different things, maybe some things that are outside the box. First thing I want you to do, sit on the edge of your chair all the way to the front of it. Sit nice and tall. We're gonna do some deep breathing, get you guys to feel good. Just gonna do this for about a minute. When you do this, I want you to breathe in through your nose. I want your belly to expand. Then I want you long exhale out of your mouth. So in through the nose, the belly is gonna expand and then long exhale out through the mouth. Go ahead and do that. We're gonna do that for about 30 seconds. Big breath in through the nose. Let the belly fill up and then out through the mouth. Okay, relax. Now you should notice that your state changed. Breathing is very powerful. You can use that in any situation. If you're starting to feel anxious or whatnot, you go to your breathing. So I'm gonna talk more about the stress response later on, but give you guys some tips when you are feeling that stress. But really quick ways to change your state because that's gonna affect up here. Now I'll be pleasantly shocked if anybody knows, what is that, that photo called? But what is, do you know what that particular one is? Not the Bigfoot, but like who was associated with that? It's called the Patty Gimlin Bigfoot, it was 1960s. That's good, you, got, you guys got Bigfoot though, I love Bigfoot stuff. Now, with your notepads, pen and paper, you're gonna get your brains going for a minute. I want you guys to think of a letter that begins with A, that has five syllables, B that has five syllables, C, D, and E. So you're gonna write down five words. They gotta have at least five syllables for A, B, C, D, and E. All right, does anybody have one that begins with A? What'd you get? Antagonistic. Antagonistic, very good. What about B? Nobody else? Brutalization. Brutalization. C, somebody different? Characterizing. Characterizing, yeah, you got it, good. D? Deglobalization. Deglobalization, very good. How about E? Very good. You guys, that's not a matter, obviously, of intelligence, right? That's working different parts of your memory. It's great to do little games like that. Can you name all 50 states? You know all 50 states, right, but can you name them? So always trying to engage your game, making 
some playfulness for your brain throughout the day. It's important. So the questions, we're going into this with, how would it feel to never have fear stop you again? We all feel fear, but what do you do when you feel it? And to be able to make the best of any situation. You can get beat down every day. So how do we deal with that? Gonna take about 40 minutes, then I'll have some time for questions. Gonna go over daily, weekly process for success, mindset mastery, gonna teach you guys something called mind mapping, and then putting it all together. So ever since I was a little kid, I took a fascination in studying the brain. How does it work? How can we use it to our advantage? Crazy imagination. And a lot of it was this inner dialogue having to go inward. So I was about seven or eight years old. We moved to New Jersey from Michigan, living with my grandparents. So I got three brothers, so there's four of us. There was eight of us in this little ranch house. I remember my mom came in, only there a couple nights, and she says, one of the neighbors, he was a little bit older, he might have been 10 years old, he died, he had a brain aneurysm. And it shocked me so much, I ran into the other room crying. For like the next four years, I was obsessed. What happens when you die? But asking myself this as a kid, when it would be foggy out, I'd go stand in the fog and be like, this must be what heaven feels like. But always analyzing stuff. So thinking, I think that experience helped me to think about a lot of things differently. So that's where I'm really hoping you guys get out of this. So starting with the mind, then we're gonna come back to this. So some, some foundations of mind mapping. You have three brains. It's called the triune brain theory. You got the reptile brain, which is the oldest part of your brain. It's the brain stem. You got the mammal brain, which envelopes that, and then the human brain, the prefrontal cortex. Now these don't exactly act individually, but it gives you a really good concept. So your reptile brain, that's lightning quick, that's reaction. That's when physical survival is on the line. That's when somebody gets road rage. The mammal brain is connection, emotion, memory. That, that's the, the biggest part when I do like mind map sessions, we're usually dealing with that part of the brain. Usually relationship stuff or career stuff where people feel stuck. And then the human part of your brain is where you set goals, it's linear logical thought, forward thinking, self-actualization. But you can't get there if you got all these issues in the animal brains, if the animals aren't happy. So you got three brains, you got three causes of threat that I usually look for. When things are going too fast, too slow, or there's a lack of clarity, all those are gonna put you into a stress response. So when people used to come to the gym like 15 years ago, with the knowledge I had at that time, they say I wanna weigh 200 pounds, come in at 240. I'd give them this very detailed plan, everything weighed out, measured out, and it was way too fast for people, right? And it wouldn't work, they couldn't form a habit around it. So all this mind mapping stuff, the premise of it is really the science of how your brain forms habits. That's what we're trying to do. Whether you're trying to get better at sales, something in a relationship, it's all habits. Everything in life is you're made up of your habits. So those are the three causes of threat, and then you have three stress responses. Fight or flight, most people have heard of that. The other one is freeze. So the first option out of those is always flight. So everything your brain perceives has to do with survival, even though most of the time the survival is not actually on the line. The brain still interprets it this way. So in any stress situation, first option is to get out of there. But in everyday life, you can't really run away. Next option would be freeze. Nobody really talks about that. I'll come back to that in a second. The other one is fight. You can't really fight the situation in life usually. So you're left with freeze mode. So that's the one that shows up. So if a grizzly bear, remember how the brain interprets everything, was going to attack me, I can't outrun it, I can't fight it. So what would happen with the human body, you'd most likely faint. That's the only chance for survival. So freeze mode shows up in our life when we get like mild depression. You wake up, oh, I don't feel like doing all the basic stuff. And we all go through that at times. But you gotta recognize, okay, I'm in freeze mode. Everything becomes a chore to do that. So we want to try to get out of that state often. So we've got to keep coming back to this. So we're going to start with, so that gives you a little bit of the mind map stuff. We're going to come back to that. Time mastery. So you guys are all busy. You have families, professions, careers. You've got individual lives. This is just a picture of the planner that I put together that I use. It's very simple. Okay, very simple. 
Planning out what you're gonna do is what we call quadrant two activity. It's important, but it's not urgent, but it'll give you a huge leg up. So Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, I remember I used to study his stuff a lot. And when you go to all these successful people, that's how he wrote that book, and say, what did you do to get successful to that level? And one of the guys wrote down something on a napkin and handed it to him, and it said, I planned my day the night before. So it's super powerful. Giving your brain directive before you go to bed. And you, you probably can't read it from here, but on the top left, if you're looking at it, it says wins for the day. So I usually write down my affirmation. What were my three wins? Your brain is hardwired for the negative. That's a survival mechanism. So you're going to focus on everything bad that happened to you. Everybody has said no on that sales call. The brain is hardwired for that. It's a survival mechanism. So we've got to constantly redirect it and give it some of the positive wins each day. Otherwise, get a snowball with bad thoughts. And the way you guys create, or anybody creates anything, is your thoughts, your words, and your actions. So the thoughts lead to the words. That's part of the inner dialogue of mind mapping. But we've got to refocus. And listening to something the other day, this group that I'm in, and he said that uh, Bill Gates' father was in a room with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. And he said, I want both of you guys to write down what has gotten you to that level. They both wrote down something, gave it to them. They both wrote the same thing, focus. It's one word. Focus is everything. Can you stay focused on what you should be doing? And that's for every area of your life. If you're so focused on what you're doing with your career, and the personal life goes out the window, that's not success. So we've got to be able to compartmentalize our focus. So you have type one and type two thinking. Think of type one thinking like spaghetti in a pot, going every which way. There's no order to it. That's when you can have a thinking session. That's when you would plan stuff out that you have to do, where you're bouncing from this idea to that idea. Type two thinking is when you take that, you sit down, you focus, and you create the thing that you set out to create, or you follow the process. A lot of times, this stuff helps me a lot because I'm a chronic type one thinker. Got all these ideas that I want to implement. But the focus is, okay, Let's do something like working with the clock. So that's something, nothing creates urgency like intense time pressure. There's something that was taught to me a long time ago, work to the clock. So I'll set the timer on my phone, I got an app I use, 20 minutes, 33 minutes, and then I work. When it goes off, it's a five minute break. Walk around, do some push-ups, do something. But this is how your brain functions much better that way. If you just leave it open-ended, you're gonna be at the end of the day and you get frustrated because you weren't getting your stuff done. So working to the clock, but that'll get you dialed into that type two, two thinking. So you can plan out your day. Okay, I got a thinking session, then I got a high output session. It's getting clarity on that stuff. Chaos planning, when people need help with this, so the brain, with all that stress response stuff, it's a pattern recognition machine. It likes prediction and response. That's how it moves forward, prediction and response. Chaos planning basically states that if you think you have eight hours in the workday, you really got about four. If you got five days in a work week, you got about three. Four and a half weeks in a month, plan for three weeks, because chaos is gonna strike. If we don't plan for that within our plan, it comes, knocks us off course, we go into a stress response. Things start going south. If you started planning your day for, okay, there's four hours of high output work I wanna get done, because you're not gonna get eight hours done. So plan for the chaos, right? So now you're giving that brain the prediction and response that it craves. Morning state. So the morning routine is critical. Now I've done all types of morning routines. Sometimes they would wind up taking over an hour and then that leads, leads to frustration. You don't have to do all these crazy routines. But what state do you wake up in? Remember, you're, you're gonna wake up, most people, in a negative state. It's the way the brain is wired. Cortisol is spiking when you wake up. It's an alert, it's a stress hormone. So everybody's safe, what am I gonna do today? So if you give yourself a simple morning routine, one or two things that you know you wake up and you're doing this. So all the simplification, what I'm now doing for my morning routine, I wake up, I read a passage in the Bible, then I do my cold tub. That's it, right out the gate. There's nothing complex, but it gives me two things that I did for myself, take me a total of 20 minutes, right? So now you won right out the gate and you have a solid morning routine. So think of is there one or two things that you currently do or one or two things you want to start doing? Start simple. 
The more complex something is, the less likely you are to form a habit around it. So what state do you wake up in? Do you listen to some of your favorite music right when you wake up? That'll change your state very quickly. Think of your favorite song. Whatever your favorite song is, it became that because at some point in your life when you heard that, there was a lot of good stuff going, going on in your life. So that can change your state very quickly. But start giving that some serious thought, your morning routine. Stephen Covey, written so many great books. I always refer to his quadrants. So if you look at down the vertical and across the top, you got important, not important, urgent, not urgent. Quadrant two is not urgent, but important. That's like planning, preparation, relationships, recreation. You think of recreation, that's not necessarily sitting there just binge watching something. That's recreating yourself, that's some type of play. That's where we should spend about 80% of our time. But most people are spending stuff, putting out fires, text message comes in, email came in, unplanned phone call came in. So we don't spend that much time in that not urgent but important box. When you're planning out your weeks and your days, that's the type of stuff you want to look at. So ask yourself the question, what should I actually be working on this week? So quadrant two, remember that. That's where you want to spend about 80% of your time. Okay, five minutes I'm going to give you guys. So I like doing something called a mind dump. You got a lot of stuff on your brain because you've been sitting here for two days. So in the mind dump, three questions I want you to answer. Then I'll tell you what the rest of the mind dump is. Two key, key relationships you're going to focus on in the next week. That could be with work. That could be at the home life. Two key relationships you're going to focus on. What project are you going to move the needle forward on over the next week? What's one project? Could be a home project. Could be a work project. What hours are you going to take for recreation or take like a four hour block of time where you're going to shut your phone? Now, whatever time is remaining, I'm going to start, set my clock. Anything that's on your mind, just write it out in that piece of paper. It's not a goal list. It's anything. It could be a movie you want to see, something you got to fix at home, something you got to do as a takeaway from here. So five minutes, go ahead, get writing. Answer those three and then do a mind dump. All right, make sure if you did not finish that, take time later to finish that. Normally when I do a weekly mind dump, it's a 10 minute block. Anything that's on my mind, write down. When people say they can't sleep, they can't get to sleep, their mind is always going. This helps a lot if you do this weekly. Just a mind dump. Anything that's on your mind, get it on paper because it eats up headspace. Is anybody actually going to shut their phone later this week? Anybody commit to doing that? It makes a big difference if you do that. You're going to watch your energy is going to come. It's a strange thing. So now kind of going into some more of the process. What are your key impact areas? Do you know what they are? What are the, it's a key impact area is the thing that you do the best. Right? Stuff that you do the best within your business that you should be doing more of. Those are a lot of times the quadrant two activities and then what can you delegate but you have to be clear on this otherwise we try to do everything and we don't move the ball down the field to so be clear on your key impact areas the best thing and one of the most valuable things we could do as humans guys is take thinking time to actually think write you know pen to paper you get a much better connection with your brain cursive if you can write cursive but actually take time to think right we're always doing stuff take time to think So goals, can I give you another minute here in a second? You got 2024 coming up, right? So goals are great, but they're just pointing you in the right direction. Okay, they're pointing you in the right direction. The more goals you have, the less likely you are to achieve them. That's just basic brain science. You don't want to go into the new year with 15 goals, unless they're smaller goals. And how often are you looking at those goals? So if you write them down right now, 
and you don't look at them again, it's better than not doing it, but are you writing them down every day? Do you keep them in your pocket? That's part of your focus. People that carry their goals around with them usually achieve them because they're constantly reminded of what the goal is. Right now, the, the purpose of any goal, this is important, is to increase your level of happiness. So a lot of times we'll set a goal and all of a sudden we start going after the goal and somewhere along that path, we start getting anxious about it. We start getting frustrated. That's not the feeling we were after when we set the goal. So when you, and this is the self-awareness that you have to have, right? Think about your thoughts. When you start feeling that, go back to the things you already have in your life that can give you that feeling. Focus on them for a period of time. Doesn't mean you stop doing what you're doing, but shift your focus. Get that feeling back and then keep going after it. Don't keep going after a goal if it's making you feel worse and worse. Your brain's gonna reject that, the habits that you had to form around that. So, one minute, you're gonna write down three, cat a goal for each of these categories. Your health, your wealth for 2024, and a relationship. And that could be your faith too, that falls under relationship. So health, wealth, relationship. Make a quick list, start thinking about it. All right, good. So you're probably gonna to wanna to give that more thought when you're going home tomorrow or whenever you're going home. But don't wait, don't do like most people and wait till New Year's Eve to set your goals. If you do that, it tells you how serious you are about reaching that. But those three categories, again, I've been studying this stuff a long time, they pretty much hit all the boxes. So keep it simple. Health, wealth, relationship. Power of relationships, guys. So everything you do is relational, not transactional. Every relationship you have, all the deals you're trying to make, it's all relational. As soon as the person picks up that it's your, they're a transaction to you, it's gonna fail. They can pick up on that energy. So relationships, an angel list. Some of you maybe already do this. So at our gyms, we got two gyms up in New Jersey. We have an angel list. It's 100 people that we could reach out to, that we could benefit, and they can benefit us. Key relationships, right? So the, these relationships that are gonna open doors for you, who are those people? What professions are they in that can connect you with your ideal client? Do you think about those people? And then you gotta start, you're not gonna nurture all 100 of them. You pick maybe two to start the first quarter, or three. And you just dial in on that. You give them a phone call. You send them something in the mail, a handwritten note. Stand out, be different. The frequency. So if you have an angel and you only reach out to them once a year when you need something, it's not gonna go very far. So this is proactive planning. How are you showing up? Can yeah, people pick up on energy? That's the main thing. How authentic are you? What energy are you putting off? You know, when that person sees your name pop up or you go to have lunch with them or dinner, you want them to be excited about that interaction. So how are you showing up? Are you building rapport with them? But the relationships, if you focus, that's pure quadrant two. This will do wonders. Right? Relationships are the key to everything. So think about that angel list and the cadence as far as how often you want to connect with them. So this is six reasons why your clients are going to stay. Other relationships that you set them up with, so that's huge connecting people. Hey, I got somebody that can, you know, they like the Yankees too. You connect, any chance you can get to connect people, do that. They're very powerful. If they're having success with you, if they feel like they have insider status, Right, so are you giving them a, a weekly report? Are you giving your clients a, a, a written newsletter that shows up in the mail? Like you want them to feel like they're an insider, like they got something that other people don't have access to. Sense of community, if you can do that. Safety, they want to know that their, their future is safe with you. Right, because the brain doesn't feel safe, it's not gonna act. And then engagement, again, how, how often are you reaching out to these people? How often are you reaching out to your current clients? Right, you gotta play defense in business. It's not all offense. You gotta keep what you got. So we're gonna talk a little bit about mindset and resilience. So a lot of people, does anybody know what that is, that picture? It's a butterfly, right, coming out of the chrysalis. Now if I went up to that and just, when the caterpillar went in and I cut that open and just let it fall out, thinking I'm helping it because I'm taking away the struggle, never develops into the butterfly. It actually has to go through that process to develop the muscles and to develop the wings to turn it into a butterfly, so it needs to struggle. You guys are gonna struggle every day. You gotta already plan for that. 
but struggle is where you grow. Suffering is different. That's more of a choice. So if you think of struggle, think of the gym, right? That, that's my, my first background. You go in there, you pump weights, you want to get bigger and stronger. Right? It's a stress that you're applying to your body. All these people that say no to you or whatever troubles you're going through, you just reframe them as, as mental and spiritual resistance training. It's struggle. You need it to advance. Some people feel struggle and they shrink down. Some people, when they feel it, they figure out the strategy to get through it because you know it's going to be there. Just like the old school video games, you get to the boss, you got to beat the boss to get to the next level. And the cool thing is when you get to the next level, the way your brain works, you got to figure out that boss. But if you fail, you don't go all the way back to the beginning of the game. You go to the previous level you were at. So you keep climbing this ladder. So expect struggle. And then your morning routine, your fitness, these are all things that are going to help you get through that quicker. Well, maybe not quicker, but you're going to learn what you need to learn within that. It's the struggle is where you're going to learn. So this is key. So I resigned from teaching in 2012 to run my first facility. I was teaching, I was a phys ed teacher and coaching at the gym. So I'd go in, coach people at five, go right to school, come right back, stay till nine. And got to the point where my body was breaking down. So my wife and me decided I had ruptured a patella tendon, I had pneumonia, just burning the candle at both ends. She said, it's time, you gotta resign. And I had a great job, I loved that. I was a couple years away from being invested in the pension. But we knew, okay, this is it. Gotta put in your notice, gotta focus on what you set out to do. So in that time though, all these fear thoughts were coming to my head. What if it doesn't work? I got this safety net, I got this great job, this coveted job that pe people would die for. And then I started realizing with fear, it's, if you think of the timeline of life, past, present, future, fear is based in the future. When you actually think about this, does the future actually exist? Seems like a simple question. As far as we know, it's only right now. Everything that you project into the future, your fear and your worry, it's just a part of your imagination. You're predicting that something bad is gonna happen. You have a bad mental image in your head of what's going to occur. So if fear exists in the future and the future does not exist, what does that tell you about fear? It's not real. That's a game changer once you actually internalize that. It's just something you gotta work through up here. Anxiety, we all get that from time to time. Some people get it really bad. To remember prediction and response, or some, something called the anxiety gap. And this is where, again, I just want you to be self-aware. Feel, okay, I'm starting to feel anxious. Well, what, am, what are my thoughts? So the further out into the future you think, you have less prediction and response over that situation. Remember, your brain craves that. So the further out you think, what happens to anxiety? It goes up. Bring your thinking back to the present moment. You plan and then come back to the present moment. So self-awareness. Anybody watch that show? It's an awesome show, right? That was probably the last one that we binge watched before kids. And it uh, seems like a fantasy at this point. But with that, why do people binge watch something? Because there's something called the open loop theory. So if you've got a loop that's not fully closed, the brain doesn't like that. It wants to figure out what happens next. The people that produce your favorite shows, they know that. They'll leave you on a cliffhanger. Oh, I'm just gonna watch one more, see what happens. Oh, I'm gonna watch one more, see what happens. They're, trying, they're filling the gap in that open loop. So how do you use that to your advantage? So your brain cannot ignore a question and it will answer any question that you ask of it. So when something bad happens to you, if you start training yourself, what's great about this problem? You will come up with the answers pretty quickly. What's great about this problem? What did I learn from this problem? Where's the opportunity in this problem? If you start doing this again, you're gonna have such a leg up on people. Because most people, it's just trash talk all day in their head. So the open loop there, use that to your advantage. What's great about this problem? Regaining momentum. So, Talking with Charles, realizing like a lot of industries, kind of the COVID ordeal knocked people off track, right? Knocked you out of routine. So regaining momentum. So the first thing you got to realize is your need for certainty. That's one of the six human needs. Is it making you freeze? The one constant in business is that you're going to lose clients and people are going to say no. One constant in life that we know is going to happen is change. But that's one of the things 
that people fear most is change. So just kind of recognize what are your top two human needs? And are you getting them in day in, day out? You need for certainty, or some people crave uncertainty, significance. But these are what drive everything. When three or more of these are met, it becomes an addiction. So then you also start thinking, how can I use this with my clients? How do I provide these things for them? It literally becomes a, a drug for the brain when you start hitting these things consistently. But recognize where you're at and are you getting what you need? Otherwise, it can be bad energy and you're, gonna, you're not gonna enjoy the process. So using the power of your mind. So this is the Thanksgiving workout. I'm in the middle with my family, the kids. My wife's right over my shoulder, but we do this Thanksgiving workout every year for charity, 7 a.m., it's awesome. People come in from all over the place, work out, raise money, they're done by eight. But I used to sit outside the gyms in my truck and picture stuff like this. I visualize the gym being packed, people walking in. You know, using it what they call the theater of the mind. And it's really powerful when, when you focus, like think about if you were, when you were kids, we used to try to light the leaves on fire with the magnifying glass. But if we kept moving it, it wasn't gonna catch fire. So you had to keep it focused right on that. So what are you picturing? What are the mental images you're picturing for success in your life? What is your definition of success? Do you have bullet points if I asked you? What does health mean to you? What does success mean to you? A lot of people don't have this stuff developed. They haven't thought about it. So then they just take on whatever society tells you. So get clear on that stuff and use the power of your mind because you, it's the frequency which you're putting out there. That's what you're gonna get. So last thing I'll finish with and then we'll see if there's any questions. So just did my first marathon, Philly Marathon. It was hard. I'm not a runner. I set it as a goal last year to do. It was terrible. It took me like six hours. It was terrible. I got to 16 miles and I was shot. But I, but I knew I was waiting for that to kick in. Because the longest I did in my training was 16 miles and I would get like these shock responses with my body. It was, it was an awful feeling for like five hours. And then finally, I'm, like, I'm just gonna figure it out that day when I get there. And the whole reason I said it though was to see what, how I would deal with it mentally when it got tough. So about 16 miles, it got tough. I started cramping all over the place. So the last 10 miles of it was like a walk run. There's people that don't look like they're in shape walking by me when I'm trying to run at the end. It was awful, but I did it. So the, the, the two key takeaways from that, right? My goal going into that was to finish. And I had to keep reminding myself that was my only goal. Don't worry about what time you get, just finish, cross the finish line. So it was a win. And then coming back to analyze, if I did it again, what would I do different? I'd get a coach. And so think about that with your life. Do what you said you would do, right? Things get very simple when you do that. And then come back and analyze. You only lost if you don't know why you lost. Come back to the drawing board, figure out what the message was there. So, process, what's your morning routine? What relationships are you gonna focus on? Get your process down, make it simple. The mindset, always ask yourself, what, what am I focused on? Where am I stuck? What's great about this problem? And take time, I'm telling you, if you take like a, a specific thinking block each week and just think, shut your phone off, take pen and paper and think. You got these brilliant minds, let them go to work. They'll solve a lot of things for you. So the mindset and then perspective. This is something that's really been hammered home to me lately is you're right where you're supposed to be. Don't think about the gap, how far you still have to go, right? Use that as a target. You're right where you're supposed to be. You gotta enjoy the process, right where you're at. And you'll get to where you wanna go, but you gotta be in it. Don't wish it by. If you just got your goal by the snap of a finger, it wouldn't mean anything to you. So that's where you gotta embrace the struggle. Okay, that's my personal sell. Uh, I'll be hanging out tonight too, but if you guys have any questions that I can help you with, mindset-based, fitness-based, just shoot me a message. Hop on the phone with you. So on all the social media, it's the Panda Man Official. We put out some really good stuff. I got some of my crew back there. We put out a lot of good mindset content, a lot of health-related stuff. So 
Think of the one thing, guys, that you're going to take away from it, okay? 